Hello everyone, my name is Dakoba, and welcome to Foundry. Foundry is a new first-person factory and automation game from Channel 3 Entertainment, set in a procedurally generated infinite voxel world. The goal of the game is to start with nothing but a few hand tools and build and expand, gathering resources and setting up new production lines until you've automated absolutely everything. Now I've had the opportunity to spend a few days playing, and here are 20 things I wish I knew before I started. Let's get into it. When you first start the game, an AI named Carl will talk you through using your map and finding your first ore. It's a good idea to take a few seconds to start planning out your factory at this stage. You want to avoid massive terrain changes like mountains in the very early part of the game, and you'll need to harvest trees both to power your early factory and to make room for expansion. By knowing which areas need to be cleared anyways, you can kill two birds with one stone. Once you have a lay of the land and have started mining ores, you can improve the efficiency of the drop pod by moving it to be directly in between the two ore nodes. Now you can deconstruct and rebuild the drop pod as many times as you want, so you can move it out of the way when you're ready to lay down foundations, but it's convenient to have it a bit closer to your mining in the earliest stages of the game. Now you start out with access to two mineral types, Technum, which is blue and is turned into rods, and Xenoferrite, which is brown and is smelted into plates. You'll need both of these in mostly equal quantities, but in the very early game, most applications use 30 to 50% more plates than rods. So whenever you have to make a choice about which ore to mine or expand your production on first, go with the Xenoferrite, the brown ore. Otherwise, you'll run into shortages. One miner provides about 60 ore per minute, and one smelter can smelt 20 ores per minute. The starting conveyors can handle 160 items per minute, so you'll need three miners and eight smelters to max out a belt line. It might be more efficient, however, to run multiple belt lines with miners and smelters in a perfect 1 to 3 ratio, either at 1 to 3 or 2 to 6. Once you have your mining and smelting set up, you'll want to leave some space before you start setting up production lines. You're likely to modify the mining and smelting setups later on, and having space to work will come in handy down the line. Once the tutorial starts encouraging you to do research, prioritize setting up at least three smelters on each resource type before you actually begin that research. This will ensure that you have enough resources to actually do that research, as well as to continue expanding your factory while it's being done. Now, when you do start doing research, the tutorial will take you through researching the emergency beacon and the assembler, but at that point you'll have to make a choice between improving your character and improving your factory. The factory improvements are going to give you a lot more bang for your buck at this stage of the game. Start with basic infrastructure, then the igneum scanner, and then the burner generator. This will allow you to automate power production and make the rest of the early game much easier. The character improvements are nice, but they aren't actually that critical to your success in the game. They're mostly focused on your inventory size, which you definitely want to expand at some point, but early on there aren't enough items to fill your inventory, and so until you get those production lines set up, that doesn't grant any advantage. Similarly, you don't do a whole lot of mining after you've cleared the first ore nodes, and so increased mining speed also doesn't provide a ton of help. So you'll want to save the research into these until after you've taken care of the things that'll improve your factory and automation. In terms of power, three biomass burners should be enough to get you to the burner generator if you go straight for it, but as biomass burners are smart and are only going to consume as much fuel as the machines in your factory require, there's little harm in running more. I set up 5 to 8 and kept them topped off and didn't run into any more power issues after that. Once you've automated power, your next research should go into the conveyor splitter and the two wide loader. These two technologies together allow you to set up a bus system, which makes setting up new production lines quick and easy. Instead of using one main bus for everything, consider setting up several smaller factories dedicated to different types of components. I like to set up one bus for building blocks, conveyors, and related parts, one for crafting buildings, and one for research. This makes it so the belt speed limitations are much less of a problem in the early game. When you set up the main bus for a factory, you'll want to space your conveyor belts with a gap between them. This will allow you to set up a conveyor splitter and ramps either up or down. The bus will need to be two layers thick so you can have conveyor belts running both along the length of the bus as well as laterally to take items out to the production lines and back in to rejoin them into the bus. And because this is a 3D world, you can actually place those conveyors either above or below your factory floor in order to make things look cleaner, although this is a significant amount of extra work. The most efficient way to do it is to simply have these laid directly on top of the foundation. And later on, you'll be able to use window tiles as well as railings to create a nice pathway along the bus that lets you see it and all the items that are being produced on it while not having to interfere with it or jump over the conveyor lines. Now when you start automating production lines, the first thing you're going to want to build is building blocks. These are used as your foundation, and you're going to need a ton of them. Next, go with machine parts. Machine parts are used for both the blue signs and conveyors, which are the other two things you're going to be using a lot of early on. From there, you can go into wire and electronic components, loaders, conveyor ramps and splitters, and anything else that you might want to automate. 
Once you unlock decor, you'll have the ability to quickly create a ton of blocks that you can use to create structures and decorate your factory. However, you want to avoid using this for flooring in the early game. Foundations conduct power, and until you have other power transmission methods, you don't want to run the risk of not having power where you need it. So use foundations for flooring and decor for walls, buildings, and other decorations. When you get into tier two science, both red and blue science boxes have to be in the same research server in order to do the research. You can't have labs dedicated to just one color if you want to do the level two and above research. When you first unlock basic infrastructure, you'll want to set up storage containers for both rods and plates. As you go through the game, you'll be automating the production of all of the different buildings, but until you get those production lines set up, you'll need to craft those things by hand, and having a stockpile that you can draw from whenever you run low on resources will ensure that the factory can continue growing. Once you get into red science, you're going to want to go into basic steel making, and then go into ore refinement. This will increase the yield of your resource veins by 50% compared to using the raw ore rubble, although you will have to use an additional processing step using the crusher. This is why we wanted to leave some space around our smelters earlier. Explosives are another priority research using red science. Now crafting explosives is a multi-step process. You'll start by crafting primitive explosives from igneum ore rubble, technum ore rubble, and biomass. Those primitive explosives can't be used in that form. Instead, they're a component for an explosive charge, which is made from primitive explosives, xenoferrite plates, wire coil, and electronic components. That explosive charge is what you can throw out into the world and trigger with an explosives detonator, which you'll also have to craft. The explosives detonator functions as a tool to activate any explosive charges that have been placed. The other major research priority as part of red science is going to be the high voltage energy grid. This is going to be locked behind the pipes research because you'll be using pipes and water as part of the generation of your next stage of power production. To use the high voltage energy generation, you need to start by placing a water intake in a body of water. You'll then run a pipeline from that water intake into a boiler. Now the boiler is also going to require some kind of burnable material and igneum ore is probably what you'll use at first. Once the boiler has both water and fuel, it will produce steam, and you can set up another pipeline to take that steam from the boiler into a steam generator. This generator is going to produce electricity, but it's going to produce it as a high voltage current. Now high voltage current needs to be transmitted along power lines which are connected via power poles. So set up a power line that will connect your steam generator to whatever machines you want to power. Once you've reached your low voltage energy grid, you can set up a transformer and connect that to your power lines. That'll transform the high voltage current in the power lines to the low voltage energy grid provided by the foundations. You can use this to set up multiple grids in different locations, which greatly opens up your factory planning. Now, if you don't want to use igneum ore for all your power production, Red Science also contains biomass farming. This allows you to take mineral rock, water, and biomass and combine them in a greenhouse to propagate that biomass for use as fuel. This is also worth setting up because you're going to need a ton of biomass to craft explosives. The information database in game is well written and contains tons of useful information. It's worth a read through while you're waiting for items to smelt up or research to finish. And that's going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this video. I hope you found these tips for Foundry's early game helpful. Leave a like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more. My name is Dakoba, and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.